Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And right away, as you can see, we will be using the Aero Freighter in this mission, which I'm really excited about. But before I go any further, I do want to say that the Aero Freighter is not available for Orbiter 2016, so I just want to put that right here at the beginning of the video so that, because I can imagine when people see this, they're going to be like, where can I get the Aero Freighter? Um, unfortunately, you can't get it. Uh, this version of the Aero Freighter that I'm using is um, uh, essentially a beta version that was made by uh, Dimitri, one of the people who's really active uh, in the Orbiter community and has stayed active even the entire time where I took my hiatus. Um, but this particular version, um, it's not finished. There are things about it that, that I understand. There are things about it that aren't uh, set up yet. And so, yeah, we still have to wait until... Uh, Dan Steph finishes, uh, hopefully finishes getting the Aero Freighter updated for Orbiter 2016 so that it will be, you know, available for everybody to, uh, to download and enjoy. But um, because I did have this opportunity to use uh, this version of the Aero Freighter, I wanted to jump on it because I love this vessel. I think it's amazing and it just makes, it definitely makes certain uh, space flights and orbiter are just uh, over the top amazing you know because when you're using you know the delta glider and even the xr2 which is my favorite vessel and i love it but certain missions just feel so much cooler when you're using the aero freighter so what are we doing in this mission so i don't know exactly what order i'm going to end up uh, uploading my missions but the last thing i recorded was a mission where I took the XR-5 Vanguard from Earth to Mars and I landed on Phobos and then I did a quick hop from Phobos to Deimos. At the very beginning of that mission in video one, I stated that my actual intent for that video was to take, was to do a Jupiter mission. But I mentioned that when I was trying to set that up, I was kind of fumbling around because I still hadn't had the experience that I, that I needed after coming back after my long break. So I was doing an easier mission instead, and then I wanted to go back and do the mission that I had originally started. And so that's what I'm going to do in this mission. So the plan is to, we're gonna start off on the ground with the XR2. I'm gonna fly the XR2 up into orbit, rendezvous with the Aero Freighter. And so the, the XR2 will get docked with the Aero Freighter and then we'll take the Aero Freighter out to Jupiter, land on one of the moons of, uh, well, get in orbit around one of the moons of Jupiter. And at this point, I'm thinking it's going to be Io. And once the Aero Freighter is in orbit around, uh, let's just say Io, then I'll undock the XR2 from the Aero Freighter and land the, land the XR2 on Io. And at least that, that's gonna be the primary mission um, I'll do a save point and then maybe pick up from that point, take the XR2 back up to the Aero Freighter and go and do something else with it from there. So with all that said, we have a ton of planning to do for this mission, quite a bit. And I don't like to just do like hand waving and say, um, I did this stuff off camera, just trust me. Um, because for people that are trying to learn and would like to follow along, I feel like it cuts them short. If I just have all this other stuff that was done off camera, they're like, well, how do I do that? So we're gonna, I'm gonna show all of it. Um, so for people who don't like to watch the planning and stuff, uh, you may wanna skip uh, the first couple videos. I'm not sure how many it's going to take, but I would say it's gonna be at least two videos where it's just nothing but planning and setup, uh, maybe even three. And then we'll get into the actual execution of the flight. So, a bit of a longer intro than usual, but with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. So, let me uh, switch my camera view here and get inside the Aero Freighter. Uh, before I do anything, I just want to take a moment to enjoy the Aero Freighter. Just look around. It's so cool. It's so cool. <laughs> you know, you look out uh, these front windows and you just have this really nice look at earth you know with with a and you can imagine you know being able to walk up and down like this observation deck it's just amazing it's absolutely stunning 
But since we do need to get underway here, let's go ahead and turn to our MFDs. Uh, we have MFD1 on this side, 2 on this side, and if we switch over here, we have a third and a fourth MFD. But we'll start over here, it doesn't really matter where, but we'll start on this side. And we'll power these up. And so the first thing I want to do is uh, find a date that I can use to go out to uh, Jupiter. And the way I typically do that, there are, the, there are multiple ways that you can go about this. Um, you don't have to use an orbiter. You can use websites to look up this kind of information. But I want to show how to do it uh, within, the, within the context of orbiter. So for starters, um, I tend to start recording my missions on the, on the, on the real world date. So this, the real world date for today is uh, Friday, uh, June 18th or the 18th of June, uh, 2021. And most likely today is not going to be a day where we can go off to Jupiter. Just that's probably going to be the case. But let's pretend like we're going to assume that we can go today. So the first thing we're going to do, just like if we're going to go to, if we're going to go to Mars, we need to be able to escape from Earth. So I'm going to select escape on that side, go forward, and then I'm going to select my target planet, which in this case is Jupiter. Now I'll, I will also say that uh, for this part of the plan, I'm not uh, concerned about, um, like I'm not going to create another stage and try to figure out how to rendezvous or how to get an orbit around Io or anything like that. Uh, just like when I went to Mars, uh, assuming that video gets uploaded first, my the first part of my plan was just let me get to Mars. And then when I'm a few days out from Mars, or maybe even a couple weeks out from Mars, then I'll start to think about, well, I know I'm not going to land on Mars, so let me figure out the Io, or rather the uh, Phobos part at that point. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm not worried about uh, Io, Ganymede, Europa, Callisto at this point. I just want to get to Mars, uh, Jupiter. And luckily, Jupiter is really easy to get to. It's a huge planet. Uh, with a m huge mass, it's hard to miss, actually, as long as you're in the general vicinity of Jupiter, uh, it's, it's just going to, like, suck you in. So, so that's good. So we've selected Jupiter, so now I'm going to go to the eject plan by pressing view, and we need to raise one side of our orbit because we need to get farther out away from the sun. Just a quick reminder of what it is that we're looking at. Sun in the middle, orbit of Earth here, orbit of Jupiter here. So if, if this is our orbit, and we need to raise one side of our orbit, we need to add in some prograde. So I'm going to just add in prograde here. Actually, I can probably go to a rough setting because we have to add in quite a bit. Can I hold it down? Usually I can hold it down, but uh, I guess this virtual cockpit is not letting me hold it down. So I'm just going to click several times until we get roughly out there. Now I'll go down to a finer adjustment. And yeah. So you can see this hypothetical currently has us going out slightly past the orbit of Jupiter and then coming back down. Um, and then as a reminder of what it is that we're looking at, so this is saying that if we eject uh, from the orbit of Earth at this point and we sling way out here, it looks like Jupiter, by the time we arrive at that point, right there, Jupiter is going to be over here. So we're going to be missing it by 353 gigameters. And that just means that uh, leaving Earth right now at this moment is not a good time, which is no surprise. So we're going to go over to our eject date variable. And I want to try to find a date where, uh, my, so my preference would be, you know, I want a low closest, I want a low close approach. I would like to arrive near the white line, doesn't have to be perfect. I would like to arrive with a time of flight that isn't ridiculous although it doesn't matter too much because we are in the aero freighter and I would prefer to have a reasonable delta V. Now I'm not going for uh, extreme efficiency here. On the other hand, I'm not going to be intentionally sloppy. I will do my best, but I'm not making an attempt here to squeeze out every last little uh, meter per second of delta V. I want to find this balance between, you know, time. Uh, you know, I don't want to take five years to get to Jupiter. And, but on the other hand, I don't want to burn, you know, 20,000 meters per second worth of delta V. So I, I want to find like a nice reasonable balance. 
So I'm going to go forward on the date. I'll start with the rough setting. And as I'm, you know, moving the date forward, what's happening here, it's, it's saying, what if I do this eject on 59401 instead of 59383? So what is that like, you know, 18 days from now? Um, so as I'm adding in days, it looks like it's adding in about two days at a time, two or three days at a time. Um, it's not helping my situation, but that's to be expected. You can see my closest approach is actually going up. But as I'm going forward in time, to, as, I, as I'm saying, well, let me do this burn, you know, five days from now, 10 days from now, 30 days from now, you can see that Jupiter is also advancing forward in time. And as I'm advancing forward in time and Jupiter is advancing forward in time, I'm catching up to it. So as I go, you know, farther and farther and farther around, I really do wish I could hold this down. I kind of want to stay in this virtual cockpit because it looks so cool. But yeah, unfortunately, I'm having to click. I can't hold it. Uh, but anyway, so you can see, you know, 59716, um, you know, our, our two lines are starting to converge. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a look at what happens when they get um, as close as they can be. And instead of looking at these two lines now, once they get really close, obviously I want to start looking at the closest approach. So that's 2125. Click again, it goes down, it goes down. So between the last click and this click, it went up. So maybe I want to go back one, go down to a uh, maybe a finer setting here, and you know find where where's that low point at. Looks like it's uh, somewhere in that range. Now I do want to kind of see my potential encounter at Jupiter. So I'm actually going to go forward on this side, view over to the encounter, and then on the left side, I'm going to go forward. So what I was doing over here, I'm now going to do over here. That way I can just see the encounter because this view, this encounter view just gives me more information. In particular, um, it gives me the inclination. <clears throat> so I can see, you know, let, let's just say, you know, we're going to fly a plan something like this without doing a lot of fiddling about. This is telling me that I would be arriving um, at Jupiter. It would take me almost 800 days to get there. It would cost me about 9k roughly worth of DV. And I would arrive with a polar inclination. And that, that's just if I were to fly this plan as is with no mid-course corrections. Um, not really what I want. And, you know, I can still see that my minimum altitude would be pretty far out. I can correct that with, you know, if I wanted to throw in some plane change, for example, looks like we'd have to go backwards. Again, I'm expecting to be able to hold these down, but it's not letting me. Um, so if I, you know, kind of swing the white line maybe a bit closer to my position, it's bringing up my minimum altitude, but that probably just means I would have to take out some prograde, I'm guessing. Yeah take out some prograde and maybe, you know, change my eject date by a little bit here and there. But the, let's see, Let, let's just, let's see what we can do with this particular date. I, I'm, I get a feeling this date isn't going to be the one that I'm going to use, but let's just see if we, if we really wanted to use this, this approximate date, let's see if we can get roughly what we want. So at the very least, I want to get the minimum altitude down to one gigameter, and I want to get the inclination closer to zero. It doesn't have to be perfectly zero, but I would like to get, you know, a roughly equatorial orbit around Jupiter. So that's going to be my goal here. So let's let's use our variables and see um, what what it would cost to, to make that happen in terms of uh, time of flight and delta V and all of that. So, so that's not helping, and that's only helping to a point. So just uh, this is this is the part where you know it gets a bit uninteresting, where you just have to you know play with variables for a while. You know, I'm just watching a couple different things. The moment I'm looking at inclination, it's bringing it down, and some add in some of that plane change I took out. That's bringing down the inclination, bringing down the minimum altitude. So I think I must have gone the wrong way with the inclination. I thought I was bringing it back towards this way, but it looks like I needed to bring it around that way. 
so okay so that's still bringing down inclination still bringing down the minimum altitude and let's look at our prograde again do we need more or less looks like we need a bit more to bring down the minimum altitude and again I said about one gigameter or less and I'll and I'll explain why I chose that number here in just one moment and then let's look at that plane change so that is helping now there is a point where I don't want to go too low so that's a nice inclination nice low inclination I actually quite like I quite like what I'm seeing at the moment it's not ideal because it does have us using more um, prograde than we would need because you can see you know we're slinging out past the orbit of Jupiter and coming back down so that means our arrival velocity is higher than it needs to be which means our braking burn is going to be higher than it needs to be uh, but we may actually I think we might actually take a plan like this uh, this plan or one very much like it because I I do know that um, because because before when I was previously trying to do some of these things with the XR5 I I know roughly what the numbers were and the total delta V was always around 9k this is actually a little bit higher than what I was seeing but I believe seven point something on the low end and and this number is the high end but then the time of flight here is only 722 days 723 days which is pretty low compared to some of the other numbers I was seeing which were like 800 900 a thousand so this plan isn't terrible and it gets us there with the low inclination and a minimum altitude around what I think is good now let me just talk for a moment why I was saying one gigameter or less let's look at orbit MFD and let's reference Jupiter and Jupiter has four moons so let's uh, let's just go through them let's say we were going to pick um, we'll go through them in the in the way that they're listed here so actually let's go through them in the way in the order so IO is the first uh, moon in and if we change the distance readout to APA uh, PEA we can see that the distance from uh, Jupiter to Io is about 350 M so keep that in mind about 350 M and then if I go no target and change my target to uh, Europa which I believe is the next one out yeah then we can see that you know essentially its altitude above Jupiter is about 600 M you know roughly and then no target we'll target the next one which is Ganymede uh, is it Ganymede or Callisto uh, so it's either Ganymede or Callisto but we can see that the that uh, Ganymede is about 1 G 1 gigameter about out and then finally Callisto uh, and yeah Callisto is the farthest one out and Callisto is about uh, 1.8 gigameters out so when I was looking at Transex and I was saying that I want my minimum altitude to be around one gigameter, uh, you know, starting at this point that I'm at now, that was why I said that because I know that, you know, if I were going to be tart, if I'm, because I, I don't want to really uh, tight um, pass into Jupiter if I'm, if my goal is to be landing on one of the moons, unless I was going to try to do some, um, you know, a tight breaking burn essentially in around Jupiter in which case I think it would be preferable to have a nice low orbit so that because the closer you are into Jupiter as long as you don't get so low that you know you're hitting its atmosphere or something then the more um, efficiency you would get on your braking maneuver but assuming we're not going to do that assuming that we're just going to be targeting the moon and doing our doing a very expensive braking burn around the moon then I would like to arrive at approximately the altitude of the moon that I'm going to be targeting and in somewhere in that one gigameter range is pretty is a pretty good starting point if I know specifically I'm going for IO then I want to be I might want to be more down in that 300 three, uh, to 300 to 400 range but just you know as a, as a starting point uh, one gigameter works okay so so I think we might take this plan um, I'm not 100% committed to it yet but we are at 20 minutes on this video, so let me go ahead and switch camera views here. So uh, that'll, that'll wrap it up for, the, for this part of the series. And when we come back, we'll take a look. Um, I think we should take a look at least, at least one more option. 
and that way we have something to compare with. My general process for doing a flight like this, especially if I were doing it off camera, I would probably try to find four or five dates that work and then I would just go through and compare what is the delta V cost on that date, what is the time of flight on that date, uh, what inclination am I able to get on that date. Because if I just pick the very first date I find that works, I don't have anything to compare it with, so I don't know if this is a good plan or not. All right, so that's going to wrap it up, and um, I'll go ahead and end things here, and I will see you in the next video.